Well, welcome to this uh, special uh, interview with uh, Coach Eric Heyman, who is coaching uh, our football team that just finished the season 8-0, won the conference championship, and are in full prep mode for our first playoff game in 21 years, Coach, against Baker University. But we'll get to that in just a second. But uh, went up, took care of business, Trinity International, didn't have to play a lot of starters. My assumption is we were able to stay healthy and we're as healthy as we could yeah. want to, as we would want to be moving into the postseason. So talk a little bit about the game up at Trinity International, the team finishing 8-0 and outright champs yeah. in the Midwest uh, side of our conference. Well, it, was a, it, was a, it was a good game for us. We uh, obviously, uh, the pressure of playing the conference championship, the, the pressure of going 8-0 is all outside noise and you're always concerned as a coach if, is that going to be pressure or is he just kind of do the daily thing and this team has been really resilient in doing the daily thing so what's what matters most is what matters now and so I think that they focus on that and so Trinity is a, a improved team from last year regardless of the record Trinity were really gritty they had some some of some in a couple of positions some of the better players in the conference honestly and, and if you watch the film they gave us some troubles here and there and so but I was proud of the team. Uh, you know, uh, David Hutton set a single game passing record, 441. And so uh, I was proud that it was uh, the elements weren't the best. It was a grass field. It was muddy and uh, raining all game. And we really uh, handled the ball for the most part pretty well. And we, we took care of business. The defense had three turnovers. They got three picks. So I was proud of how they played and really started to uh, shut them down. Uh, they, we had to make some adjustments, and the defense did that and uh, really sh shut them down for the most part of the second half. So. Yeah, talk about a season bracket, right? Yeah. I mean, the uh, the Ice Bowl yes. starting at Missouri Baptist, and then you end the season at Trinity International probably with, again, the worst weather day that we had since the first game of the right. season, 30-mile-an-hour gusts, yes. wind gusts, rain coming down sideways. Right. And I thought what you just said, too, did a nice job taking care of the ball and throwing the ball right. as many times, 50, 50 pass yeah. attempts in that ball game. And like you said, David Hutton, sophomore starting quarterback, setting a passing record for the Tigers. Right. And so, um, you know, we, the, the real impressive uh, aspect of the team is the mindset, whether it be negative two, our first game, or rain. Uh, and so we, we felt like uh, we kept asking how to grip the ball. We kept, we, you know, we had a lot of balls that we were going to use. And so we felt good about that. They were giving us the pass all game long, and so we just took it. And our receivers did a good job. Uh, our, our protection uh, did what they needed to do to give him enough time to make those plays. And, and David's a really, I think he's a special guy, special player, and, and uh, um, made, made good decisions and got the ball distributed. So, yeah, I, I love how the team overcame the elements and uh, – did what we had to do fundamentally to secure the ball, snaps. You, get, you know, got to give uh, Matt Sweat a lot of kudos to a snapper, the long snapper, fish. Uh, all those things were pretty flawless in a pretty bad weather game. Well, and, and let's let's talk for a minute before we talk about our game that's coming up uh, about uh, just our all-conference players uh, and uh, two all, two uh, Midwest. Uh, Mid-States football players of the week, David yeah, Hutton, yeah. Bryce Deguerra, who that's the third or fourth time that Bryce, I'm assuming he's a lot, he's a lot right. for first team, but you know right. that. So why don't you talk a little bit about the leadership that you've had on this yeah. team and a young team, right. uh, the depth that we have, and a lot of youth, but talk a little bit about the maybe some seniors, yeah. uh, senior leadership, and also our, our, conf our, our conference players. Well, our seniors have been uh, really the backbone of the team, and then there's also a, a group of what we call core leaders, core group leaders, and from once we started uh, the off season, we knew that there was something special about this group. Uh, they were really wanting to take a lot of ownership. They were really wanting to develop their own leadership style, and uh, they were really wanting to take personal uh, responsibility for their actions while holding the team to team accountability, and so this has been by far the, t the, the best team that we've had here, and it's Rightfully so, it's our oldest team that have really uh, um, just really bought into the, the values and really practiced the values and then uh, the gold standard culture. Um, it's a buzzword, but I heard somebody talking about it. You know, culture is lived out every day. And so it's not just something you put on the wall 
Uh, we have a plan. Uh, these guys worked it out the plan, and it's a daily plan. And so when you think about the seniors, when you think about the captains, uh, when you think about um, the core group leaders, uh, when you think about the staff, the leadership has been exceptional. And when you have exceptional leaders, and then the people behind them are exceptional followers, and uh, <laughs> they, they lead themselves well as followers, uh, then you have exceptional results. And for us to go undefeated, first time in the program's history, I believe, uh, uh, you know, I heard another coach say the other day that your, your talent is the floor and your, uh, your character is the ceiling. And so we hit a high ceiling because of who we are. Character is a mindset, it's, it's your actions, it's, it's your integrity, it's, uh, it's, it's all those things. Um, uh, we had talent, I mean, you know, Jalen Dunnigan, David, and Freeman, I think Freeman's the best player in the conference uh, defensively for sure. You know, Bryce is a really good kicker. Uh, so we have a lot of players. The O line was exceptional. D line, Ari and Graham. Graham. I mean, those guys are relentless. So we have the talent, and but the, what, the, what's best about like a guy like Grant or Ari? Watch them work. Watch them work in the weight room. Watch them work in the in the um, uh, Freeman. Uh, after after our game at Trinity, was trying to get in the weight room on Sundays. Trying to go, hey, can, can somebody come and get me in the weight room? That's who he is, and so that's who we are because. Uh, you know, uh, I think we have a lot of guys that demonstrate the actions of a leader. The level that they took it this year was the ability to speak as well. So uh, you, you have to, as a leader, you have to model it, but you have to speak it too. And I think those guys did a phenomenal job. Well, Coach, I, I think that starts above our athletes as well. And I think it's, it's, it's a commendation to you uh, and your coaching staff and the way you lead because I hear – I, I get I get exposed to a lot of different areas on our campus because of the my day job, the role I play, and I, I hear a lot about what you just talked about, the high character guys, you know, sometimes the stereotype that athletes carry with them. Um, I think you guys have busted that like a pane of glass this year because you have uh, great football players, but they're also high character guys, and I think that's a compliment to you and your staff, the way you recruit, but also the way you invest in the lives of these young men. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I, I, on these, we usually talk about players, and rightfully so, because without players, we can't, we're not a team. And so, but the staff, you know, we have, you know, Coach Youngblood, the number one scoring defense, uh, Coach LaCroix and with Renfro, offensive coordinators, they are the number one scoring offense. And then, honestly, the guy that you, no one hears also is Coach Peterson. So he runs our strength program. I've always seen the strength coach as the head coach uh, when I'm not there, and so, um, so he's with the players more than any other coach, and so he, the whole team, and so he's leading the the the, uh, the strength program, and he's installing, instilling these values in us through that process, as the other coaches are in practice and so forth. But you know, Coach Peterson deserves a lot of credit as well, and I, you know, the head coach always gets too much credit. I mean, we have an incredible staff, and they all. Uh, have incredible value. They bring it. They bring their skill to the table. And it's a, sometime we'll have to tell the story because it's a pretty cool story about some of these staffs and how we've come together. And uh, just this season, it's a pretty, pretty epic story. Well, it was about five, six years ago now that the whole journey began with you. And I know you like to deflect, Coach, right. but the reason that staff is here is because of you as well and the way you surrounded yourself with, again, just great men. And when you, when you have great men on your staff, uh, it, it can't help but spill over into the team. So this week uh, might be dating this video a little bit because we are recording this three days before our first playoff game against Baker University. Two teams that are 8-0, kind of an odd set series of events here. We're playing a team that played a fall season, so they haven't played real live football since the fall. But I know you don't look at that. Both these teams come in 0-0, right? Uh, right. It's, a, it's a new season. So talk a little bit about our game coming up uh, this Saturday. What a privilege to play in the playoffs, right. Coach. And uh, you, you're filling up the bus tomorrow. But talk a little bit about Baker University and what our game plan is. Yeah, I think it's, a, it's an awesome accomplishment. And we've had some reflection, time to reflect on going to the playoffs the first time. Is it 21 years? So just an amazing accomplishment and, uh, by these, this team and these coaches. But Baker... Uh, well, first of all, we play in the Mid-States, which is 
a great conference, and you prepared, you know, you played national champions before, all that type of stuff. So I think the conference prepared this. But second, um, it's every team in the playoffs is really good. <laughs> so, I mean, when we watch our film, they're, they're good. They're probably as good a defense as we faced. Uh, probably are the best defense we faced. So they're very uh, fast. They're very, uh, they're very, uh, they know their assignments. They're very disciplined. They, they run to the ball. And they, they, you know, they're going to stop the run. They really are committed to stopping the run. And so I like our matchup. Uh, I think we, we have some really strong uh, players on our, on our side of the ball on offense. And, and uh, I'm excited. It's going to be really physical. It's going to be a challenge. And we love the challenge uh, defensively. Our, I like our defense. I mean, we're really uh, – I think their defense is a number one rated rush defense in the country right now. 40 yards, they've given up no – uh, rushing touchdowns, so we're excited for that challenge. And then on the on the offensive side, they're very good at what they do too. They they execute at a high level. They want to run the ball, um, you know, and then they use the pass to really get big plays. They, they do a lot of trick plays as well, so they can do some you know have some uh, just trick stuff there. But our defense, Coach Youngblood's done a great job, and we're going to have a plan. I like I like our plan. It'd be kind of like a, a Roosevelt game, you know. So that you know they love to run the ball and. Um, so these guys, I love to run the ball, and Coach Youngblood, he does a good job of stopping the run. Players do a good job of stopping the run. So I'm excited about the matchup. Well, I know there are parents going, but tickets are limited, so there will be a lot of people that will be watching this game online, cheering on the Tigers, hoping we can get to the second round. And who knows what happens when you get that far, right? Yes. I mean, you, you can't win unless you're in, yes. and we're in. So, so we'll worry about the second round. Absolutely. When we get to the second round, we'll, we'll, we'll worry about this game. We'll worry about practice today. And uh, that's what we're going to focus on. So, Well, you've said that all year. It's yeah. a day at a time and a game at a time. So big day coming up for you, though, on April 22nd. Yes. Uh, you know, as you build a program, um, gifts and giving yes. for us are a part of that as well. So why don't you talk yeah. about the day of giving that's coming up for Olivet, April 22nd, and maybe the role that uh, fans of Tiger football can play in that for our program. Yeah, so I think uh, the day of giving is a great opportunity for all of Olivet, people that are uh, have a – desire to give and have the, the ability to do it, to give to specific uh, entities within the, the, the school. So hopefully we raise a ton of money for the whole school in general. But for football, you know, I think we're trying to continue uh, having a program that's gold standard. I think we've put a pretty good product out there, but there's always opportunities for more. Uh, there's some improvements we want to do within our locker room, and uh, we want to do some improvements in, in um, our offices to update some stuff. And then we, we like to get some of our – our players after the workouts, nutrition, and the last thing would just be retreats. And so there's some things that we're looking for to help uh, develop our players, develop the program. Um, and so we have this uh, opportunity on April 26th to uh, give to the program. And the cool thing is, is a, a donor gave a $10,000 matching grant. And so as we collect funds, we could, could get up to maybe 20, you know, plus thousand dollars. So that's just a great opportunity. Uh, for our team, uh, to, it's a great opportunity for somebody that really is interested in investing in our football team. Those that investment goes to our players, and it helps do our number one goal of our program is to develop our players, not just for now, but for forever. So, well, as we wrap this up, uh, anything else that you'd like Tiger fans to know about as we uh, again are three days away from our first playoff game, like you said, 21 years and. Uh, Anything that you want to say? Yeah, to the I, I just think uh, thank thank you is the. I think we always want to have an attitude of gratitude when I think about everything that goes into it. I, I think uh, I'm thankful for uh, my boss Mike Conway and, and all the support. I'm thankful for Mark and, and Alicia and all the athletic trainer for uh, our support staff, the media team. You guys have done our media team is the best in the country uh, at our level. I'm, I'm I'm convinced of that. I'm thankful for our administration, Dr. Webb, who has really been a supportful. I mean, this thing, you just don't have an 8 no season uh, and uh, tackle the, all the obstacles with COVID without a ton of support, and we've had a great support, and we're extremely thankful, and we're thankful for you, all the support you've given us, all the texts I've received, all the, the parents and friends and family that have been supporting the players. It means a lot to us, and I just wanted to know that we're very thankful for all your support. And I would just like to say kudos to our student athletes who the, the thing that is in the background of everything else we do is COVID, right? Yes. And the way our students on our campus, athletes included, 
have managed themselves this semester. Great. Um, it, it has. It's been fantastic and great. The leadership of Mike Conway, all the coaches um, and everything. So, man, Coach, it's been a privilege to have another interview yes. here after our last game of the season for the reasons that we're doing it because we're in the playoffs. And who knows, after this week, uh, maybe we'll be back around next week yes. doing one. Never know where the things are going to fall. We could even have a home contest, which would be the best of all scenarios that we could draw. Hey, it's been a privilege for me representing Mike Knezovich here, the play-by-play -play man of all things Tiger athletics, but especially today for football. And the privilege it's been for me to be the color commentator to do these with you, Eric. And I'd just like to say good luck this Saturday. Uh, go get them. Yes. Uh, this is Mid-States versus Heart of America, and I'm with you. I think we play in the best conference, arguably, in the country. Uh, and so good luck this week, safe travels, and, and look forward to seeing you on the other side with a big victory, 9-0, and and continuing this conversation. Thank Mark you. Holcomb for Coach Eric Kamen and Mike Knezovich uh, saying thanks for watching, uh, and go Tigers! <laughs>